Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 30th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Symantec has a brief write-up of X-Helper um, Android malware that has been on the increase over the last few months, according to Symantec, with about 45,000 devices infected. Now, what makes this malware kind of special is that it's very persistent, hard to get rid of, and also not that easy to actually notice. It doesn't install itself as a regular application, but instead just as an application component. What that means for an Android user is that you don't see the actual application as part of the regular user interface. Instead, it launches itself based on a a number of events. So for example, if you connect your phone to power or disconnect it from power, if you reboot it and a couple of other actions are linked to this particular application component and will start XHelper. Now, once it's up and running, it will connect to a command control server. This connection uses a TLS and also key pinning, which means that you can't easily intercept a connection with a standard man in the middle proxy. Once connected to the command control server, it's then instructed to download and install additional components. If you manage to exit XHelper, well, it will just start itself again. Now, the good news, if you want to call it, that is that this application is not using a particular exploit to install itself. It is installed willingly by users as a component of other software they may download. So one step, of course, that you can take to protect yourself is to not download applications from third-party app stores. Symantec's write-up isn't talking about what specific permissions this application is asking for, but then again, you should be careful if an application that you download is asking for permissions that you didn't expect from that particular application. Many users that are infected by this particular malware are also reporting that the malware installs itself again after they remove it from the phone. Now, Symantec says they haven't really quite figured out how this is accomplished, but they attribute this to a second component that has not been captured yet. Since XHelper is able to download and install software, it's certainly possible, I think, that you have sort of two different versions of XHelper installed, where if one of them gets killed, the other one will then download the latest version again and run it. And in-game currencies have often been abused by criminals. The latest victim of this activity is the game Counter-Strike and container keys that you can purchase for real money in order to unlock new features within the game. Well, it was possible to trade these keys within the game. This apparently was heavily used in order to launder money and and Counter-Strike now no longer offers the ability to trade keys within the game. The way this would work is that a criminal would use illicitly gained funds to purchase these keys, then resell them at a discount to another unsuspecting user. And in doing so, they would then be able to obtain essentially clean money from that user. Similar things have happened with many other games and uh, with sort of in-game currencies like this. Of course, it always requires that a game is reasonably popular in order to have a large enough market to actually absorb uh, this illicit uh, currency. And in diaries today, we have a neat little tool that actually I haven't been aware of that Xavier wrote up. It allows you to convert YAML files into PCAPs. It's a PCraft is the name of the tool and it's of a PCAP file generator. The neat part about it is that you sort of can describe in YAML what kind of traffic you would like to generate and then the tool will spit out a complete 
PCAP. So not as flexible as like Scapy or such, but really nice if you would like to create some more complex transactions. And then today is also kind of a special day in that it's the 50th anniversary of the first internet connection or well back then ARPANET. So well, it started all 50 years ago. I think we still have to figure out how it really works. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.